Let's examine the unit vectors for Cartesian coordinates in two dimensions. If you have a two-dimensional universe, like this whiteboard, it's very useful to be able to describe any vector that lives in the two-dimensional universe. So what I'm going to do in this video is describe a system that can allow you to describe any vector that lives in the whiteboard. So we're going to start off by examining how we can use vectors to construct other vectors. Let's say you have two vectors. We can call them uh, v1 and v2. So this is v1 and this is v2. You can see that v1 and v2 have the same span. They are actually on top of each other. They point in the exact same direction. If you wanted to construct any other vectors from these two vectors, you would be limited just to the line that passes through them. So these are the only vectors you can construct out of these two. So this is not a very useful coordinate system. If you have two vectors that point in the same direction, you're only going to be able to describe lines, uh, or actually one single line that goes through the two vectors. So all of these vectors out here are going to be completely missed. You're not going to be able to get to them because they don't lie uh, on the same direction. They're not in the span of these two vectors. What we want to be able to do is to create a system where we can get all the two-dimensional plane. So what we need is two vectors that point in different directions. So let's say this is v1, and this over here is v2. These guys point in different directions. So we could actually add scaled versions of v1 and v2 and get any possible vector that sits in the two-dimensional plane. So even if a vector points in this direction, or this direction, or this direction, we can construct them just by scaling v1 and scaling v2, and then adding those scaled versions together. But the problem is, those computations are going to be very tedious and annoying. Why is that the case? Well, there is actually a non-zero projection of v2 onto v1, and vice versa. So if you take the dot product of v1 and v2, that is a non-zero value. There is a dot product between these two guys. So that means they are not perpendicular. Another thing, uh, these guys don't necessarily have to be of unit length. They can have a magnitude that is anything. And that's also very annoying, because then you have to keep dividing by that magnitude. So ideally, what do we want? We want two vectors that are perpendicular to each other. And we also want two vectors that are unit length. So we want the magnitude to be equal to 1. So how can we do that? Well, we can choose the vectors i hat and j hat. And these guys are unit vectors that are perfect for this system. So this over here is going to be the origin of the coordinate system. And i hat is going to point in the horizontal direction. And in the vertical direction, we're going to have j hat. So these guys are both of unit length. So I'm going to try and make sure these guys are the same length. In fact, I'll draw this guy to be just a little longer, uh, because I want this guy to be exactly the same in this diagram. So I want this diagram to be roughly to scale. It's not a perfect diagram because it's on the whiteboard, but we want to make sure that these guys are unit vectors. So the magnitude of j hat is equal to the magnitude of i hat. They're both uh, equal to 1. So I'll write that underneath over here. So i hat, the magnitude of that vector, is equal to the magnitude of j hat, which is equal to 1. And that is uh, one of the most important definitions for these two guys, because it really simplifies uh, the coordinate system. It means we don't have to keep carrying those magnitudes around and dividing through by them. That is very annoying to do when you have really big vector quantities and vector equations. You don't want to be dividing through by extra factors. So that's why we set this equal to 1. What about that other property, the one where these guys are perpendicular to each other? These guys are at 90 degrees. They're perpendicular. And what does that mean? That means that i hat dotted with j hat is equal to 0. So the dot product of these two guys is 0. Or equivalently, if you were to take the projection of i hat onto j hat, you would get 0. And the same is true if you take the projection of j hat onto i hat, you would also get 0. So imagine a light source up over here. What shadow would get cast onto i hat from j hat? There would be no shadow, right? because this is just a vertical vector. It points in the vertical direction. So if you have a light source directly above it, there is not going to be any shadow. Remember, this is infinitely thin. 
It has no uh, width to it. It's just a vector. What about this side over here? If you have a light source coming over from the right, and that light source is dropping down over here, any other vector that points in this direction uh, is actually going to have a shadow. So that shadow is going to be the projection of that vector onto the vertical direction, onto this vertical axis. But i hat does not have any projection. Its, its projection is 0. Why is that the case? Well, it's pointing in the direction that is perpendicular to this vertical axis. And that is why this is true. The dot product of these two guys is equal to 0. Another way of seeing that is the dot product is just equal to the magnitudes of the vectors times cosine theta. And theta is 90 degrees. And cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0. So that's why the dot product is equal to 0. So we've seen from several different perspectives that these guys have to be perpendicular to each other, and they have to have a unit length. These little uh, lines on the side, that is just denoting magnitude. The magnitude of i hat and the magnitude of j hat, that is equal to 1. So these guys are actually called an orthonormal basis. The concept of orthogonality is a generalization of this concept of vectors being perpendicular to each other. So these guys are orthogonal because of this dot product over here. This dot product is 0. And these guys are normalized. The concept of normalizing a vector means making sure that this magnitude is equal to 1. So that's why these guys are an orthonormal basis. And why are they a basis? It's because they span the entire vector space. So these are concepts from linear algebra. So all of the vectors that live in this plane are actually described by these two vectors. Now that's in, in general true for any two vectors that don't share the same direction, two vectors that are not in the same span. Right? These guys don't have that property. These guys are limited just to one line that passes through them. These guys over here, v1 and v2 as defined over here, they can construct any of these guys, but the computations are too tedious. These guys have the very special property that they are mutually perpendicular and they are unit vectors. So now let's actually use them to construct a general vector. So let's take the position vector, and we can denote it by r. r is going to be our position vector. I'm going to draw it over here. So we're going to have r going up to here. And this distance from the origin to this point over here, that is the magnitude of r. And the angle of r, that actually speci specifies the direction of this vector. So I'm going to call this vector r. This is r, and I'm going to draw a little arrow above it to signify that it is actually a vector quantity. All of these guys are vector quantities. But what's special about these two guys, they have a little hat. That denotes that they are unit vectors. They are, they're a special type of vector. So what we can do is we can actually do the same thing. We can take those projections. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a projection of this guy onto the vertical axis. And I'm also going to take the projection of this guy onto the horizontal axis. So this over here is a projection down onto the horizontal and a projection onto the vertical. So this over here is perpendicular, and this over here is also perpendicular. We have a right angle triangle over here and over here. So this, this is the angle that we can actually call theta if we were dealing with polar coordinates. But we're not going to deal with polar coordinates in this video. That is the topic for next video. So now what we can do is we can take the projection of r, and we can put it down into the horizontal direction and onto the vertical direction. So what we can do is we can scale i hat along the horizontal direction until we get to the horizontal projection of r. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a smaller version of this diagram. This over here is going to be r. So this is r. r is going to be equal to the sum of two vectors. One vector is going to lie along this axis. So we're going to take this vector over here, and we're going to add it to this vector, the one that lies along this axis. So this vector is a scaled version of j hat. And this vector, vector is a scaled version of i hat. So what we can do is we can write this as a scaled version of i hat. And the scaling factor I'm going to put as x. x is the horizontal component. And we're going to add that to y times j hat. And that is the vertical component. So can you see that this guy over here, this is a small representation of this length. And this guy over here, that is a small representation of this length. Together, these guys add up to give r. So you can write r as in terms of i hat and j hat. So they are 
uh, scaled up versions of i hat and j hat. So as long as you take i hat and j hat and you scale them and then take the sum, you can generate any possible vector. So r is just some vector. It can point in any, there are any direction in the two-dimensional universe that we're living in. So what can we do with this definition? We can say r is equal to x i hat plus y j hat. And what we can do is we can describe the time derivative of this vector as well. We can describe the velocity and the acceleration. How would we do that? Well, the velocity is very simple from this. i hat and j hat do not depend on time. They're always going to point like this. So i hat and j hat are always going to look like this. It doesn't matter what happens to the other vectors. So they don't have any time evolution. They stay the way they are. So if we take the time derivative of these guys, that's not even going to change. So these guys are just vectors. So what do we have? We're going to have the time derivative of this component and the time derivative of this component. That's going to give us x dot. This is the dot notation for a time derivative. And then we're going to have i hat. And then we're going to have y dot. And we'll have j hat. So this is the velocity. This guy over here is the horizontal component of the velocity. And this is the vertical component of the velocity. We can write that up here. We can say vx is equal to x dot. And vy is equal to y dot. So this dot uh, denotes the time derivative. This is the same as saying dx dt. And this is the same as saying dy dt. So it's, this, it's just differentiating with respect to time. That's what this little dot says over here. So this would be the Leibniz notation, and this would be Newton's uh, dot notation of time derivatives. So this is the velocity. What about the acceleration? The acceleration can be written like this. The acceleration is also a vector. And we remember these guys don't depend on time. It's only the x dot and the y dot that depend on time. So what we can have is x double dot. So we're taking the derivative again. We're, we're differentiating with respect to time twice. And then what we can have is y double dot. I'm going to have a j. So over here, we have all of these guys, all these important quantities, the, the displacement or the position vector, the velocity vector, and the acceleration vector. And we've got them written in terms of i hat and j hat, in terms of the horizontal component and the vertical component. What about these guys? This over here is actually just a x. It's the acceleration in the horizontal direction. And this guy over here is a y. That's the acceleration in the vertical direction. So we've actually decomposed all of these really important vectors into a horizontal component and a vertical component. And if you take the sum of the scaled versions of i hat and j hat with the scaling factors being the horizontal and vertical components, you can actually construct this guy over here. And this is a very convenient system. One of the conveniences of this system is that i hat and j hat are always going to satisfy these properties. They're going to be unit vectors. They're always going to be perpendicular to each other. And a very useful thing is they don't change. They don't depend on time. When we get to the next video where we start talking about polar coordinates, we're actually going to find that the unit vectors depend on time. Unit vectors, if you're, if you're looking at the polar coordinate system, they actually change depending on where you are. But these guys are fixed. i hat and j hat are fixed. They're always going to be like this. So, i hat is always going to point in the horizontal direction, and j hat is always going to point in the vertical direction. These equations, are, we're going to keep seeing equations of this form later in this playlist. And we're also going to see velocity and acceleration uh, coming up again and again and again. We're definitely going to need to decompose uh, vectors into their components. And we're definitely going to be using unit vectors. These concepts over here are going to be very important in classical mechanics and in quantum mechanics when we get to some of the more difficult topics. If you want to see those videos, make sure to find them in the Quantum Mechanics playlist. You can find all those videos if you click over here.